So we said a buffer has two components, an acid and a base, and they can't react with one another. So a lot of times we use those conjugate acid-base pairs. So there's a few different examples there of weak acids with their conjugate bases. It tells us the Ka value of those weak acids and then tells us where that pH range, where it would be helpful, where it would be used uh, in order to keep a pH relatively stable. So why is it that the acetic acid is used acetate ion buffer is useful in the 3.7 to 5.8 range. And why is it that that second one is useful in the 6.2 to 8.2 range? Why? Uh, so what you're going to look at, you guys learned uh, from your sophomore year chemistry that you could calculate the pH of a substance by doing the negative log of the H plus concentration. Well, you could do the pKa value by doing the negative log of the Ka. So if we were to take the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, that is the pKa value of 4.74. Well, 4.74, that's right in the middle of the useful pH range. If the goal of a buffer is to try and react with whatever extra hydroxide or hydronium ions might be added to a solution to try and keep the pH relatively steady. If the pKa of that acid uh, and conjugate base combination there of the buffer itself is 4.74, that means it's, it can work in that pH range that's a little bit less and a little bit more. Um, outside of that, it, it wouldn't do a good job of keeping the pH relatively steady because it would work, it would basically either run out of conjugate acid uh, base chemicals there in order to react with whatever hydroxide or hydronium you might be dumping in. So the useful range of a buffer is right around its pKa value. So if we did the pKa of the second buffer, it would do the negative log of 6.2 times 10 to the negative eighth, 7.21. That's right in the middle of that useful range. So it could go anywhere from 6.2 to 8.2. Uh, that second buffer is a good choice. And same with that third one. You could do the negative log of 3.6 times 10 to the negative 13th. And again, you're right smack in the middle of that useful range. We did some calculations for pH. Uh, in that buffer zone yesterday, and I was telling you that you would see uh, an equation today that would help make that portion of the calculations a little bit easier. So we're going to look at the derivation a little bit of where the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, what it is, uh, where it comes from, and then how we can use it. So we're going to look at a weak acid dissociating in water to make some A- and H3O+. The Ka value for that reaction, if we had to solve for it, we'd do the A- times the hydronium concentration over the concentration of HA. But if I asked you to rearrange that equation, make it solve for H3O+, instead, you could see off to the right hand side there with a little bit of algebra manipulation, we have what the H3O plus would be equal to. Well, what if we've, we've been doing a lot of negative log of H3O plus to find pHs, right? So what if we took the negative log of that H3O plus, and if we did the negative log of the left-hand side, we'd have to do the negative log of the right-hand side as well. That ending part of the negative log of HA over A minus, it's a little bit messy because we're adding a negative. So if we flip the fraction there and put the A minus on top, now we're not adding a negative, it can just be adding a positive log of A minus over HA. Well, if we're doing the negative log of H3O plus, that's the pH, right? And if we're doing the negative log of the Ka, that's the pKa. So in bold there at the bottom, there's your Henderson-Hasselbalch equation that the pH equals the pKa plus log of A minus over HA. 
or if you were talking about it with a base, we often use P-O-H, so you do the P-K-B. And then on top there, that B-H plus, that's the conjugate acid of just base B. Now, in order to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, you need both A minus and HA available, or both BH plus and B available. If you only have one of those two chemicals available, then the equation isn't going to work. For that reason, the equation only works in the buffer region of the titration curve, because that's when you have some excess HA left over, for example, and some A minus that has formed. You need both chemicals there. So a lot of people rely on this equation. Once they learn it, they think it works all the time. And it doesn't work all the time. It only works in the buffer region, and that's it. So what does the pH of a buffer depend on? When you look at the equation there, it depends on the strength of the acid or base used. So it's Ka, pKa value. That's the big factor. And then you can kind of fine tune your buffer by using, uh, by adjusting the amounts of acid and conjugate base that you're using, the molarities of that A minus uh, and HA.